welcome to a different segment of uh, these continuing broadcasts uh, where we cover a little bit of the radio work I've done recently. Uh, now, I'm a big fan of radio and I quite enjoy visiting radio studios. And on this trip, I got to visit three different places, which I was very excited about. Uh, first, I went and checked out the Kapu Studios with Rich Lindsay uh, for a guest appearance on his program uh, with Chiz Radio Lost and Found um, on Thursdays from 10 to midnight. Uh, and then I got to check out the Freeform Portland Studios and visit the What's This Called program. A show that I know quite well because (laughs) Ricardo and I go way back. Uh, But uh, in this particular case, um, we had me on as a live guest, which was very different from what we normally do when we work together. Uh, And then lastly, uh, my appearance on the Oob Radio Salon with Doss and Nina uh, on uh, their wonderful program, which uh, is on live uh, every week on the DFM and you streaming uh, service. It's also uh, real radio over in Europe, but um, you know we stream it over here. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, all of these were really cool performances. Very fun things to do. I, I can't say enough fun, exciting, nice things about it because uh, I got to do what I love and play live music with people that I enjoy, um, and it was really very, very, very cool. Um, So I think we're going to get things started here with uh, my appearance on Rich Lindsay's Radio Lost and Found on KBU Radio. This was the 11th of April 2019. And uh, you'll see in the video uh, a little bit of my uh, friend, the Ramen City Kid, who was assisting me on that particular show. Um, Thank you very much, Ramen City Kid. You are awesome. Um, he and I go way back and I think that he's probably funnier than I am and I hope that the words that I gave him to read uh, are as funny as he is or at least reflect some of that Um, but yeah uh, and then you'll see Rich and him and whatnot wandering around and I oh I use a little bit of uh, Rich's uh, footage as well um, in the video very cool uh his show is great and uh kboo studios is really fun and um yeah check it out here it is All right, this is Mini Mutations at 10. I'm Austin Rich, and here's a quick look at the headlines. Brought to you by Capitalism. If you enjoy the benefit of exchanging goods and services, but feel that it lacks the creepiness and discomfort of riding public transportation, why not try Capitalism? It offers an economy that you're looking for with all the hideous nightmares that you've come to crave. Make a transaction or something worse today. And now, here's Travis with a story from our science desk. And later in the program, the circus comes to town. What you need to know to protect both you and your family. Travis? Thank you, Austin. And tonight, the recently photographed black hole has requested that people online stop distributing its photo. Quote, please stop tagging me, stop sharing it, and please don't use it for any of your stupid memes. The black hole is happy to snap a photo with Katie Bowman as they both work together, but since the photo has gone viral, the black hole feels that its privacy and security are at risk, and with photos like this going around, it does not reflect the much more mature look that the hole now has these days. Users found sharing the photo will find need to escape will find need to escape the digital gravity of contributing to the problem. And if we are to culturally take a step out of the event horizon of violating privacy concerns. Austin? Thanks, Travis. And on the lighter side of the news, it appears that the circus has come to town. But gone are the days of flying elephants and drunk clowns, which are now relegated to CGI flights of fancy. For some reason, they also featured Danny DeVito. No circuses these days are tame affairs, where once 
was the joy of introducing people to caged animals that rode around on a train. We now just see a strange assortment of acrobats and disturbingly sober clowns performing under some French title that makes you sound far too fancy to be at the circus. Uh, then again, if we spend a little time with the circuses we're familiar with, we may pause long enough to wonder why this false nostalgia for a more complicated and problematic circus has become such a draw for the modern hipster. Let us listen and observe. than the previous wall. Do you bring your favorite show back to town? You know, one of the reasons we made the greatest show on Earth is because the world needs laughter today. We have a system that's full. It's just full. And I was telling some of the people before, if it's full, there's nothing you can do about it. That kind of laughter. But the real circus story is more than laughter. Another question for you on social media. You tweeted in support of Congressman Nunez's suit against Twitter. There's part of a larger discussion that Senator Josh Hawley has been leading about making social media uh, companies liable for the content that is on their platform. It's an exciting story, a human story. A story that was a tremendous problem to The circus never stands still. The circus is wheel. Rolling wheel. Some horrible court decisions have been made over the years. It's very unfair, and that's the way it is. But uh, the system is full. And we actually can do it faster, and it's, uh, it's less expensive. If you Wagon wheels, truck wheels, train wheels, a world on wheels, fighting wind and rain and mud and blood, and above all, fighting time. And when it's full, there's nothing you can do yet. Hi, everybody. And when it's full, there's nothing we well, can do. Well, here's where circus sorry, we can't take work. Work. Horses out of their car, wagons to unload, get off to the circus ground. We're used to this. Do it every day in a different town. Here goes a load of tent poles. Our careful. country is full. Uh, area is full. 
Oui. To keep moving. We from Hollywood had to travel over 60,000 miles to film our story of this. The sector is full. Can't take you anymore, I'm sorry. Can't. Amazing world. We actually became part of the show itself. Our Hollywood stars had to learn to be real circus performers. Unbelievable. So it's better, faster, and less expensive. That who knows? Some of it's 30 feet, some of it's 15 feet, some of it's 12 feet, depending on the area. Always use more help, and here's Big Blank, our largest elephant and leader of our herd. or a change in law that you would support? Well, we have to do something. I tell you, I have uh, many, many millions of followers on Twitter. Two tricks later on. But right now, they are off for the showgrounds a mile or so away to help put up the big tent. Much of it's reinforced heavily and very, very hard to climb. If you... The biggest pole wagon is just coming onto the circus ground. The elephants are right in time to be put to work. Okay, so turn around. That's the way it is. We expect to have close to 400 miles done within about uh, two years from now. That's a lot. 400 miles will cover most of it. Sharp up on top, too. As an example, look at that blonde ball of condensed energy, Betty Hutton. You want to climb that? Things are happening, names are 
taken off. People aren't getting through. You've heard the same complaints. Big top. It will tower 55 feet in the air. Here's one way we drive stakes for tent roll. You deserve whatever you can get. And it seems to be if they're conservative, if they're Republicans, if they're in a certain group, uh, there's discrimination and big discrimination. I see it absolutely on Twitter and uh, Facebook, which I have also in other... What a workman she is. To play Holly, the trapeze artist, she trained for months with Antoinette Kinsella, one of the world's great aerials. Audiences couldn't believe that they actually saw what they actually saw. Frenette Kinsella, one of the world's great aerialists. Audiences couldn't believe that they actually saw what they actually saw. But it's a very, very hard. It's meant anti-crime. It's called anti-crime. It's, I guess we have 60 million, almost 60 million on Twitter, and if you add them all up, it's way over 100 million people, and I get Now, canvas for the big thing. And, watch this. Betty Hutton flying through the air with the greatest of ease. A man once was happy, but now he is forlorn. Like an old coat that is tattered and torn. Left in this wide world to weep and to mourn. Betrayed by a maid in her teens Oh, this maid that he loved, she was handsome And he tried all he knew her to please But he never could please her one quarter so well As the man on the flying trapeze I float through the air with the greatest of the daring young man on the flying trapeze My actions are graceful, all oh, girls I do please And his love I perlineth away I play with the mist like the cat with the mouse My eyes would undress every maid in the house Perhaps I am better Described as a louse 
but still people come just the same. I smile from the bar on the people below. And one night I smile on his love. <sighs> she blew me a kiss and she hollered, bravo, as I hung by the bar from above. The air with the greatest of ease The daring young man on the flying trapeze My actions are graceful, all girls I do please And his love I bear loineth away Some months after that, he came into a hall To surprise he found there on the wall red letters which did his heart gall but she was appearing with me I taught her gymnastics and dressed her in tights to help me live at my ease I made her take on a masculine name and now she goes on the trapeze Sometimes, when the media circus comes to town, it's more and more like a dog and pony show, selling you an idea that is nothing more than cotton candy dreams. Thank you. And that was my live appearance on KBOO with Rich Lindsay on uh, Radio Lost and Found. Thank you so much, Rich and the Ramen City Kid. Um, Rich also provided transportation for that appearance, which was super, super cool. Now, uh, up next, uh, we have a performance on What's This Called?, which was on Freeform Portland. Um, I think they uh, have one of the many, many acronyms, KFFP. Um, but yeah, uh, I've known Ricardo for quite some time, and when I was coming through town, I didn't even really <laughs> have uh, the idea of appearing on his show. I was just kind of like letting him know, hey, uh, let's get together, let's do something. Uh, as soon as I contacted him, he booked me for his radio program and for a live appearance in a record store on Record Store Day. <laughs> so uh, I cannot thank Ricardo enough. Um, I didn't even ask him for this, and uh, I got it anyway. So uh, you are excellent, dude. Thank you so much. Um, so here's a video from that, which also includes Office Products, uh, <laughs> which was super cool. Office Products was playing the show uh, that day at the record store as well, and so Ricardo talked us both into joining him on the radio, which was really excellent. I'm a big fan. Uh, so, yeah, you're going to get to see me and uh, Doug Therio and David Chandler uh, in that order. It's really neat. Uh, I'm excited. And it looks like this. So, all the way from Salem, Oregon, with uh, no further ado, I guess, this is uh, Mini Mutations. A lot of people don't realize what's really going on. They view life as a bunch of unconnected incidents and things. They don't realize that there's this like lattice of coincidence that lays on top of everything. I'll give you an example, I'll show you what I mean. 
Suppose you're thinking about a plate of shrimp. Suddenly somebody will say like plate or shrimp or plate of shrimp out of the blue, no explanation. No point in looking for one either. It's all part of the cosmic unconsciousness. You need a lot of acid though, back in the heavy days. I'll give you another instance. You know the way everybody's into weirdness right now? Books in all the supermarkets about you the triangles, UFOs, how the minds invented television. Well, the way I see it is exactly the same. There ain't no difference between a flying saucer and a time machine. People get so hung up on specifics, they miss out on seeing the whole thing. Take South America, for example. In South America, thousands of people go missing every year. Nobody knows where they go. They just like to disappear. But if you think about it for a minute, you realize something. There had to be a time when there was no people, right? Yeah, I guess. Well, where did all these people come from? Future. Where'd all these people disappear? Hmm? Fast. That's right. How'd they get there? Flying saucers. Which are really. Yeah, you got it. Time machines. I think a lot about this kind of stuff. Do my best thinking on the bus. That's how come I don't drive, see? You don't know how to drive. I don't want to know how. I don't want to learn, see? The more you drive, the less intelligent you are. What do you like about it? Well, I like that it's like, it's something new and it's just reviving like old rock and roll and it's like, it's raw again, it's for real, it's fun, you know, it's like, it's not visual, there's no rock stars. I've never heard of a label that doesn't screw an artist. You talk to anybody who uh, audits their label, they're always owed money. Music is life. It's part of everything. Music is a gift. Music is the only thing that's ever made sense to me. is hope and healing. Music is a way of life. Yeah. Music to me is just, uh, it's just a way of life for me. It's all I really know for the past 20 years or so. Music is my outlet. Music is breathing. And if nothing else, usually the label holds back enough money that your cost of auditing is such that you won't do it. So that's the business model, is screwing the artists. They're fun. practices have been shady since the beginning of time. Music is fulfilling. Music is happiness. Music is essential. Create. grandfathered in since the 50s and 60s when rock and roll really started. 
in the 50s. They were screwing the artists then, but there was much, much less money involved. Everything. My inspiration. Unity. Music is ubiquitous. It is everywhere and everything. Then as you start to go into the 60s and 70s, the hit ratio is so bad that they're saying, hey, you know, we can't pay the hit artist because he's paying for all the bad artists. was set up in the very early stages of the recording industry, taking advantage of uneducated, easily swayed artists who don't really care about the money. To say music is everything, I don't know where I'd be without it. Music is necessary. Music is your soul. Music is a party. For me. Music is, was, and will be the most important thing in my life. Music is my escape from reality and my chance to be the best version of myself possible. Music is my outlet. Music is cool. Bad ass. Friggin' sweet. Unfortunately, there's a lot of fallout, but um, still, with bands getting paid, you know. We had to sue our label to get paid. And they've created this strange, convoluted system that you have to be a lawyer to really understand. A typical record deal is structured something like this. The record label gives in advance, say, $250,000 to the artist to record an album. The artist then records the album. Suppose that the album sells 500,000 copies at $10 each, yielding $5 million. The record label then takes their cut out of the $5 million, typically 85% of the total sales, leaving the artist with $750,000. Music is red. Music is what keeps me from doing bad things. Music is, aside from my family, why I get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> but before the artist receives any payments, the label first deducts the advance. the record label recoups other costs such as recording costs, half the promotion costs, half the video costs, and tour support. Music is purpose. Music is world peace. Because no one really like fights over music like that. Unless it's on the internet. Unless it's on the internet. Music One thing I find, other than that food, 
that no one can tell me they hate. I go through life, no one hates food, that you may hate a type of food, but I've never found a person that just hates music. This leaves the artist $425,000 in debt to the record label. Music is, I don't know, it's like that extra invisible family member or something. Music is passion. Music is uh, a great connector of people. Music is the solution. Music is really the biggest way that people can connect to one another. And then this deck gets carried on to the next album, the next album, and the next album. Most people have seen long form contracts. They're insane. And there's all these little these little things thrown in. It's kind of like legislating, you know, legislature for a government. They put up this big issue, but underneath that issue, there's like 17 other little laws that they threw in that they're not talking about. So when you say yes to this one thing, you're actually saying yes to like 45 other things. Music is great because um, I think it's one of the only things that can like, evoke so much emotion just from listening to one track, one lyric, one line, one melody and I think that's all you need and it can get you through anything. Once again, 
from Salem, Oregon. Many mutations who will be in just a few short hours at Spex Records in Kenton. Along with Office Products and a couple other bands, Office Products will be next. Okay, that was my performance, but please uh, don't go anywhere because you actually get to see something really cool now with Office Products. Here's Office Products.
All right, that was, and continues to be, Office Products, live on What's His Call. Not to be confused with Office Projects, who you might uh, encounter online. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, tagged him that way. Right. <laughs> Although, you know, maybe that's the title of the album? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Off- yeah. Office products with office projects live on what's this called? They will be at Spex Records uh, in a couple hours, um, really. Um, yeah, 6 p.m. the show starts. Uh, there's some other bands playing, and uh, and office products will be in the mix. Uh, I, I think you guys are going on third, if I if I remember hearing right, because you, you had a friend that needed to get done with work or something. We try to be accommodating. You know, everybody does. And, and, and here at Freeform Portland, we try to be accommodating, too. So, uh, you know, reach out and tell us what, what you like to hear and what you like to do and maybe even get your own show, you know. It's, it's a good thing to do. Everybody should get a radio show and uh, be broadcasting all the time, in my opinion. Share, music. share yeah, share communication. You know, that's what the, the biggest problems in the world are, are uh, people don't do creative things and, and share it with other people, in my opinion. They, there's too much... Uh, too much being fed and that is going to do it for part one of this presentation please stick around because part two two which will be coming shortly uh is going to feature my entire performance uh with the big city orchestra on the oob radio salon uh on easter which was excellent okay well but i'll save that for later anyway uh this is the end of part two uh one Stick around for the other one. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much to Rich Lindsay, uh, the Ramen City Kid, Ricardo Wang, Office Products, um, the staff at KBU and KFFP. Um, you guys make things happen, and that's really, really, really excellent. Thanks. And uh, be seeing you.